2020 has brought in a series of unprecedented challenges. COVID-19 has pretty much shut down the idea of international travel, and we're still trying to negotiate our way through departure from the EU. Because of this, more and more of us are going to be staying in Britain for our holidays. I'm here in the Merseyside town of New Brighton, where a couple of entrepreneurial street art fans are trying to redevelop the town with art front and centre of their vision. Join me over the next couple of days as I get to know the area and ask the question, is this the future of the British seaside town? My name's Doug, you're watching Fifth Wall TV. Obviously, this being Britain, when I've come to film, it's not exactly the most beautiful day in the world. So just picture it in the summer with everything all nice and shiny. It's time for a quick history lesson on New Brighton. New Brighton is a town with a population of around 15,000 people, situated on the Wirral Peninsula on the west coast of England, roughly 20 minutes outside of Liverpool, but is definitely not Liverpool. Of those 15,000 people, 1,065 of them have no official religion and according to a 2011 census, 71 identified as Jedi Knights. Up until the 19th century, the town was referred to as either Rock Point or Devil's Nest and was largely used as a route for pirate smuggling contraband. In 1830, Liverpool merchant James Atherton bought up 170 acres of land and began building his own version of the affluent Brighton that he saw in the south of England. of the tape officially opens to the public the new extension of the marine promenade, of which this swimming pool is a feature. From here out, the town continued to develop and grow and was once regarded a jewel in the crown of English seaside resorts. Every year, thousands of tourists would flock to bathe in Europe's largest outdoor swimming pool or would come to see famous bands at the Tower Ballroom or have a romantic stroll along the largest pier in the UK. However, the good times weren't to last. By the 1970s the tower had come down, both the pier and the bass had been destroyed and rumours of insurance jobs and deliberate mismanagement have overshadowed the official stories put out. With the introduction of cheap package holidays abroad, it seemed the fate of the town was sealed. By the 1980s, the shop fronts had been boarded up and the fate of New Brighton lay in the hands of politicians who had never even set foot in the town. Rock Point Leisure, fronted by New Brighton born and bred Daniel Davies, have taken it upon themselves to reinvest into the town and bring it back to life. Um, Dan Davis, and I'm the CEO of Rock Point Leisure. Well, it was the 80s, really, that I yeah, remember. Thatcher was in a deprivation, a lot of drugs, in particular heroin. It was normal for the bargain booze to get robbed every few days. And also, a lot of seaside towns like New Brighton had seen the sort of heyday. To be honest, I grew up here thinking I couldn't wait to get out. I'm Ian Richards and I am Rock Point Leisure's brand director. Uh, we're a hospitality and retail regenerate, led regeneration company. So what we're trying to do is breathe new life within an area of New Brighton that essentially was heading into permanent decline. How we're doing that is by basically buying up and leasing redundant and derelict properties and um, introducing new independent concepts into them. We started off by, by getting some of the kids who were causing problems and getting them to sand benches down, paint lampposts, clear litter up, and it started getting a bit of momentum. Yes, there's a commercial side to things, but there's also very much a community-based um, element of what we're doing. And one of the things that we've introduced is um, obviously the street art within the neighbourhood. The first real, you know, proper piece of street art, I'd say, we did was the Martin Luther King piece. And that was, that was a couple of years ago. And it, it was, we painted the back of a pub we don't own, but it was on Hope Street. It's quite mad walking around the town this size and seeing the amount of art that they have here in New Brighton. I think the inclusion of local artists integrating elements from the town's history is really important. The Beatles, the old tower, the pirates, the town founder really helps celebrate the town's heritage and identity. No matter where we are, we've always got something to research and, you know, like a story or a folklore to get our teeth into. We like to celebrate places that are, are 
often forgotten or you know off the grid. But this place is full of history. This piece you can see behind me is by the local artist Brez. He's depicted a one-legged diver that used to dive off the pier for pennies. Right, it stopped draining for about two seconds here, so I'm going to use this time to go see if I can find Fanakapan, who I think is painting around here somewhere. you've got a cafe, a tattoo shop, a restaurant, even just your corner shop with somebody's artwork that's painted in it that is a little bit well known. You might go, oh fuck, when I'm in this area, I kind of want to go and visit there to see that piece. So that's a way it can enhance a business as well. Um, about 10 years ago, the seafront um, had a big scheme completed which promised that there was going to be a, a great economic tsunami that would wash across the rest of the town. We're one street away from the promenade and 18 months ago, where we are now, there was probably two dozen boarded up shops. There was the pub that we now operate successfully, which had steel shutters all over the windows and it was sucking the life out of this part of the town. So we're trying to keep the big boys out of our little part of town. So, you know, we haven't got the Costas and the Starbucks and the Tesco Expresses. What we have got is a fantastic greengrocer that's been here 47 years. We've got a small art gallery that's been here 20 odd years. So, or, and, and these are people we know and people we actually care about. How do you stop this becoming a monopoly? <laughs> um, because of the very way it's set up. It, 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 it's set up as a platform so there will be other people. This can't be reliant on me. It can't be reliant on any one person if it's going to be sustainable. This sort of footings and settings that we're putting in place will make that not a monopoly, but it will protect it from the big companies. We should be exporting talent from New Brighton all around the world. A lot of the problems that, uh, that the country has could be fixed if there was, you know, I, I think, just a few changes and a different way of thinking. And this is a bit of a test model. The one thing that won't happen is it won't be boarded up again, you Brian. So the rain kind of killed my timing and I've had to come back to London to do my wrap up. And it's kind of fitting really because when we talk about regeneration here, it's very different to the regeneration that the guys in New Brighton are talking about. Here it's synonymous with overpriced luxury matchboxes being sold off for international investment. Whereas with New Brighton, it really feels like this is a lifeline for the town. It is great to see art being used as a vehicle for positive change and in the short space of time that they've been running they already have a pretty impressive roster of British talent. If I'm completely honest there's a prominent gender gap that could do with being closed in on and I'd like to maybe see them flex a little further across the artistic spectrum but the wheels are in motion for some pretty bold visions already. 2020 is a year calling out for change and I couldn't think of anything better than seeing a busy high street filled with colourful independent businesses when there's absolutely no shortage of boarded up shop fronts and dead spaces in towns across this country. Only time will tell whether or not this really is the future model of the British seaside town but what I can say is that if we leave grassroots innovation and creative thinking to the suits in Parliament then we're all fucked. Thanks to Daniel and his team for having me up. Be sure to go check out New Brighton for yourself. Maybe you'll have better luck with the weather than I did. Till then, I've been Doug. This was Fifth Wall TV. The mayor presented Carol with a trophy, plus a check for 200 pounds and a gold watch. 36, 23, 36. She's 19 and single. 
And that all adds up to a very attractive young lady.